to BCTV's Young Newsmakers. Coming up on the Newsmakers Newscast, a smashing time at the Brooks House. Santa is back in town. Can Renew be salvaged? The present and future of the fire department. Four days of dance in southern Vermont and our reporters run away and join the circus. All this and more coming up. Following up from our story last week at the Burke's house. Just a week after taking possession of the historic building, the new owners held a celebration in the River Garden and ceremonial wall whacking. First off, we will be talking more about the Brooks House with Governor Peter Shumlin. Now going downtown with our reporters Amelia, James, and Zania. Last week, we reported that the Brooks House had new owners. This week, we're reporting that Governor Peter Shumlin has joined them in celebrating the rebuilding of the historic Brooks House. no way that we could have put this together without the community and without the support. But for us from the beginning, this is really more about the um, sort of transformation of this town. I'll never forget walking through that building the day after the fire, giving comfort to friends and strangers who lost their homes, lost their places of business, and lost everything that they knew when they woke up that morning. We all made a promise together that we were going to turn tragedy into opportunity. And that's exactly what we celebrate today. I'm James, here with? I'm Pete Shumlin, governor of the great state of Vermont. Mr. Shumlin, since you grew up in this area, do you have any childhood memories of the Brooks House? I sure do. I was just out smashing a wall in the Brooks House with a sledgehammer with uh, the folks that have worked so hard on this project. Glad to be with you, Zaniah. Um, what was going through your mind when you heard about the fire that happened in the Brooks House? Well, you know, I was down here right after the fire, and really the main thing going through my mind at that time was just how we helped the people that got burned out of their homes, that got burned out of their restaurants and businesses, and how we were going to help them get the help they needed right away. How do you think the changes in the Brooks House will help in Brattleboro? Well, you know, the Brooks House is a major part of our downtown. Jobs, economic opportunity, in this case a college where you and others can go to school to make sure that we keep our downtown strong. What do you do when you're not um, busy being like in the office as a governor? Well, you know, one thing I've learned about being governor is that you're pretty much running seven days a week from early in the morning till late at night. But when I do get time off, I like to exercise because otherwise I get governor's gut. So I like to run, I like to ski, I like to do anything outside that gets me out. Go down, go down, go down, go down, following is the $14 million upgrades to the Brattleboro Police and Fire Departments. Last week we visited the police station and learned about the deficiencies of their current facilities. And today we look at the Brattleboro Fire Department to look into the changes that will be happening there in the next two years. This is Bright Lavender at the Fi Brow Row Fire Department. A couple of the big things with the new fire station is a lot of their safety concerns. Some of the things that we just talked about was um, air pollution inside the station. Um, with the trucks running, is really dangerous for us to be around and to work with. So one of the things that the new station will have is what we call a primal vent system. And that allows a filtration system for the air so that you're not breathing the truck exhaust. So that's just one of many things that will take place in the new station. 8.334 times 1,000 gallons of water is 8,334 pounds of just water that's on the truck. When you hang on this pole, it, oh. pulls, it pulls them open.
We know you spend precious time digging past those bread ends. We do too. You feel pressure to eat them, but you never actually do. So do we. We understand. We know. Well, we know just throwing those pointless bread ends away would be wasteful. And we're not wasteful. We also know that some of you like bread ends. That's okay. That's why we would create a bag of just eggs. A 100% end loaf. Remove those useless ends. Go to www.uns.org to sign the petition and join the movement today. Save time. Save energy. Save dough. Some area residents have fond childhood memories of Santa's Land in Putney. Others say its golden years have long passed. A succession of owners have attempted to revive the 50-year-old theme park so new generations can enjoy it. Our reporters Amelia and Skylar take a closer look. A cherished Putney landmark that was once part of many childhood memories is open for business once again. William Billowicz told previous owners Tim and Leslie Wells that if they ever wanted to sell the park to contact her first. They never did. In fall of 2012, she saw Santa's land was up for auction. It triggered a maternal instinct and she knew she had to save the park. When asked if the park would retain its familiar attractions, William Billowicz said that they won't change what has been a tradition for generations. Santa's Land has closed and opened many times in recent years, but time will tell whether this new owner can find a new ways to keep the park thriving. Up next, it has been plagued by financial problems for a number of years, and now Renew and Salvage has closed its doors at least for now. Will the second-hand building supply business be able to reimagine itself and open and reopen? Or will area home builders and bargain hunters lose this important resource? The beloved home deconstruction and salvage material shop, Renew Salvage, recently closed due to financial issues. Renew has been a resource for many people, both professional contractors and homeowners, looking for inexpensive second-hand furniture, antique fixtures, and building materials since it opened in 2005. Renew's social mission is about job skills training because we also want people to be able to be sustainable. Just like we want to sustain the environment, we want to sustain the environment that is our community. Financial issues have plagued the nonprofit organization for a number of years now. This past week, would be customers found the building locked and phone calls were unanswered. A June 21st message posted on social media informed the public of attempts to reimagine the use of the retail space and alluding to further changes. We have new visions for what we can become, but we need your help to make it happen. Several board members resigned in the weeks following that announcement, and only a handful remained to try and sort out their financial problems, including a $1.5 million grant that will somehow need to be repaid. Founded by Stephen Stearns of the comedic duo Golden Stearns, the New England Youth Theater, or NEYT, is enjoying another busy summer with performances that range from the Shakespeare to Hairspray. Our team paid them a visit to learn more. There's always fun things happening at the New England Youth Theater. This week, we headed down to Flat Street to chat with melodrama campers and directors. It's about a time-traveling, space-traveling person named The Professor, or Professor Mobius. So, is this your first show here? Yes, actually, it is. Is this your first show at NYT? Nope. Mm, okay, so what other shows have you done? I've done Fantastic Mr. Fox and La Moustache. Okay. Cool, are you having fun? Yes. Yeah. Good. Can you tell us about some of the upcoming shows? Yes, I can. Actually, I can tell you that upcoming is The Brady Bunch in October. 
That's going to be fun. That is going to be very fun. Uh, I'm directing Professor Mobius and the Architects of Doom. And what is that about? Um, well, it's a about a time traveler who goes to Brattleboro in the future when it's become this huge megalopolis of the city. For more information on current, past, and upcoming NEYT auditions and events, you can check out their website, www.neyt.org. Welcome back to our broadcast. We'll be right back after these commercials and stuff. Do you lead an active lifestyle? Do you want to eat well and stay fit? No time to sit down and enjoy your sushi. I'm so tired of these stinking chopsticks. Your non-denominational prayers have been answered. At last, we have liquid sushi. Sushi in a bottle, I love it. We had liquid sushi at our wedding. At last, I have time to eat and drink. Now available in spaghetti, chicken, lasagna, and our new specialty, hamburgers! It's like sushi. sushi! We love our sushi! Yes. We love our sushi! Circus Schmirkus returns for their annual summer visit to Brattleboro. The circus features exceptional youth performances, clowns, popcorn, and all the trappings of a classic traveling circus. Amelia and Bright were there and filed this report. Twenty-nine years ago in 1987, Circus Mercus was founded by Rob Merman and the International Multi-Age Circus Troupe has been dazzling us ever since. This year, the amazing performers will perform 69 shows in two months all around New England. Their acts don't only look impossible, they are funny as well. Every year there's a new theme. This year was the Land of Oz. The dazzling athletes can be very young, 10 years old at the youngest, but they are all great at their act. All kids may be away from home for a while, but they all think running away to join the circus was worth it. Up next, the Southern Vermont Dance Festival is a four-day event being held in venues all over Brattleboro. It's a celebration of dance and music. Our intrepid reporter, James, finds out more. Brenda Siegel is the director of the Southern Vermont Dance Festival. Could you tell me a little bit about that over the next three days? Sure, over the next three days, there's gonna be community activities, performances, and dance classes and lectures and workshops that people can take all over Brattleboro. There's going to be formal performances, informal performances that you can purchase tickets for, and there's also going to be classes, workshops, and lectures. You can buy a full immersion ticket and be part of the whole thing. Um, there is also going to be lots of community activities that are free and offered to the community. There'll be schedules all over town, black and white schedules, that say Southern Vermont Dance Festival schedule on it, that you can, where you can find out what you, what you can do throughout the weekend. Welcome back to our broadcast. We'll be right back after this short break. My fellow moose, or mooses, or meese, well, you know what I'm saying. I have something important to tell you about. A moose cannot be too careful when driving on area highways and country roads. You never know when a human might dart out into the road and create a hazard. Humans don't know any better. They will walk out into the road and a moose needs to think quickly. A human can do significant damage to your vehicle and put your loved ones in the vehicle at risk. Remember, humans are unpredictable and we must pay attention to posted signs and be prepared to take evasive action. Thank you. Hello. This is a very important public announcement. Gummy bears have began to take over the world. <laughs> that you can save yourself from the gummy bears. Defense method one, toothpaste. No, not tooth Defense method two, dress and baby. Or simply give them a look like this. 
Am I making you uncomfortable? That's what I thought. Welcome back to our broadcast. We cooked our breakfast on the hood of the car this morning. Let's go to our forecast with Bright. Yesterday was very, very hot with the temperature 97, but today, today, it's 94. Saturday, it's 92, and a strong afternoon of chance of thunderstorm. Sunday, woo, that changes. It goes down into 86 and has possible thunderstorms. Monday, partly sunny and 83. And that's the weather. Back to you. This has been the Young Newsmakers Newscast. Thanks to everyone who made this program possible. And thanks for watching. Keep, Keep Vermont weird. with Where Are They Now? I'm Grace, here with VCTV Movie Star. Amelia Conley. Awesome. So, how did you get to be so famous? Well, my career started in VCTV Time Traveling Trio. My big break was when in Time Traveling Trio I said gag me with a spork. Understandable. Well, thank you for having the time to talk to me. You're very cool. What your occupations have been since you've left BC's TV's summer program? Oh, well, uh, I'm the president of the United States of America. 